self dock alone. Nice Pam wall trick. That's right, crew. We're going to set up the boat so Philip can dock single handed and show you how to do it too. Thank Pam Wall at pamwall.com for the awesome single handed docking tip and follow along as we show you exactly how to do it step by step so you can get your boat in safely and get the bragging rights too. you today a little trick that Pam Wall taught us about how to dock single-handedly. We've just got you, yourself, and you. Want to make a big long loop? Yeah, a snatch block. First step is to make a big elongated loop with a dock line. I usually just tie the bitter end through the looped end with a bowline. Okay, to make your long continuous loop, I usually just take the looped end of a dock line and then I've got the bitter end here, and I'm going to connect them with the bowline. And here's a big little bowline instruction if you'd like that too. So you turn your long end, and here's your short end. Long end, you do an inner loop like this. And it's got to be come up and crossed over on the loop. You try to make a loop another way, say like that, then that won't work. Okay, so very important how you do the loop. I always have to hold the lines in the same hands. Long line on the right, bitter end on the left. You make your loop, you come in the loop from behind with the bitter end, you go around the long line, and then you come back through the loop on the front in between the twist of the loop and where you came in from behind. And I'll know you've done it right. As I start to pull, I can see the little U-shaped, um, you know, cinch point forming, so I know it's gonna be right. So once I pull it, that's what your bowline should look like at the end. You have sort of this U-shaped joint, and that's your bowline. And now we have our whole long continuous loop. And you may find on your boat you have a cleat or chalk or some other fixed point that gives a fair lead to the dock right at your pivot point. We don't, so we attach a snatch block and use that. Our one long continuous loop lined up right with the rudder. It's important for this maneuver that you find the pivot point of your boat. On our Niagara, it is in line with the rudder, and on most boats, it's generally in the area of the rudder post or near the companionway. You can find the pivot point of your boat by tying it at the dock in the final position of this maneuver and motoring forward in idle and away from the dock to see the best point on the tow rail that securely holds your boat. While we were doing a different team docking maneuver here, it's still a good example of what can happen if you set the pivot point too far forward. You'll see I have it here about midship, which when pulled aft will bring the bow of the boat into the dock. When resistance is applied to a pivot point that's too far forward, it brings the bow of the boat into the dock. A springer affixed at the proper aft pivot point will prevent this. And he's got this loop and he's gonna lay it on the dock. I'll run it under the lifelines for him. And he's just gonna come up and find your cleat on the dock. And you toss the loop off and so you've got some time, you know, the loop's pretty long to, um, for it to pull. And while you do want your line to be long enough to give you time, you also wanna make sure it's short enough to prevent your bow from making contact with the dock. For this demonstration that Philip is about to show you, we have um, a long continuous loop because we already know the length that we need it. This is the dock that we come to all the time. It's kind of like having preset dock lines that you know exactly how long they need to be. We can just use the single loop and lay it over on the dock and we know it's the exact right length um, because we come to this dock all the time and so that makes it easy. But you can still use this continuous loop method um, for a new dock, a dock you've never been to. So you may not know coming in, you know, how much room you're going to have forward and aft or when is the exact good point, you know, to stop and, and cleat the boat. You know, you can make that decision on the fly using this method um, and just cinching off part of the loop. I'll show you. So if I'm coming into um, a new dock, you know, and I don't know that the long continuous loop is going to be the right length, 
I can um, keep a part of it here for easy grabbing so that I can make a determination as to the length of the dock line. I'll show you. So rather than just throwing it all off like that where it'd be kind of hard to get back to, I'm just gonna hold a piece back for my own use right there. And now I'll throw my dock line over, catch my cleat, come back to the helm here so I'm in control. I am in forward idle, but you know, I've got the wheel if I need it. And now I've got this extra bit of line where I can keep easing up, easing up if I need. If I need it shorter, throw a few on the winch, you know, and I can pull it tight. And then when I'm ready to stop the boat, throw it in like that and lock, stop the boat whenever I want to. So it gives you, um, even though you have a long continuous loop, you don't have to wait the whole length of the loop. If you come to a new dock or there's an obstruction that you didn't expect, you can stop the boat short of the length of the continuous loop. And as he's going forward and then that line catches, he steers away from it so that it, uh, the boat is trying to go outward but being pulled back. As Philip is nearing the dock, he has the boat in forward idle and he steers the nose just slightly away from the dock. Here we go, so I've got the dock line. I'm just gonna jump off and do nothing, primarily. The boat is moving now on its own in forward idle as Philip drops the loop around the cleat. Pretty close to the dock. Right. There he goes. Once the line catches, Philip will steer away from the dock here to port to counterbalance the force of the line. Philip then locks the wheel over in order to dock the boat. just kiss the dock. Idling in forward with the wheel locked away from the dock, the boat is now held secure with only one line and the captain can now freely step off to tie other lines as needed. He's docked single-handedly. Honey, proud of you. <laughs> so you leave the engine running, he's got it locked over to port. All Locked, you mean did you lock the wheel? Or? Yeah, the wheel's locked right now and it's in forward, so it's just using It's just in this, force. kind of pushing against itself, work, working right against right this. So Get out the boat, check other lines. Everything is safe and boat's not moving. The hot feet will get, on, get out of there. Pretty cool, huh guys? Hope that helps you out. And thank you, Pam Wall, for the tips. Extra shout out to Pam Wall here, who not only taught us this trick, but was also critical in helping with the editing of this video to make sure I accurately covered the pivot point, which is crucial, and the extra tip of shortening the dock line if you need to, so it gives you options while you're docking. Um, from my how to get your wife to go cruising video and just talking to a lot of people that are just now getting into cruising, um, very new to it, I know docking can be one of the most stressful things um, when you leave the dock and come back to the dock and your boat is coming closer and closer to destruction. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a scary moment and I hope this is a tip that gives you um, a lot of control you feel like, a lot of um, very slow methodical movements that allow you to come into the dock safely without jumping, screaming, yelling, any danger to you or the boat. Um, so thank you, Pam Wall, for helping me with this, and I hope you all have found it helpful, those of you looking to go cruising. Now you've got a way to dock the boat all by yourself. No yelling. Docking fights ruin marriages. <laughs> if you've been enjoying the how-to series, give us a thumbs up, and check out all the other cool content on havewindwilltravel.com. Yes, you can. I'm going to have to... 
get on video personality to do it. I thought we were just going to video it and you were going to overlay it. Explain what you're doing. Well, this gives me the option to maybe have your voice if I need it. My voice is secret. Everybody wants to hear yours. Exactly, because it's not on there all the time. Keep them wanting more. Okay. Okay.